Good morning, Glendale. Good morning and welcome to a very special event, an event which honors a son of Glendale and a true American hero. My name is Mitch Mockey and I'm the president of Gopher Broke National Education Center. We tell the story of the Japanese American soldiers of World War II, of their courage, their patriotism, and their service as they upheld the wisdom of America's promise. The promise that in our nation, no one is to be judged by the color of their skin, the nation of their origin, or the faith that they choose to keep. Sadao Munamori embodied America's promise. He was the son of immigrants, born in the United States and raised here in Glendale. And despite having a different skin color than most of America, and despite that his parents had immigrated from a nation with which we were at war, and despite the fact that he was Buddhist, Sadao Munamori knew he was an American. He enlisted in the Army a month before World War II. And despite the fact that his family would be incarcerated in Mansonar Relocation Center, Sadao served with the 100th Battalion 442nd Regimental Combat Team and sacrificed his life to save the lives of two fellow soldiers on April 5th, 1945, only one month before the end of the war. Today, we have all gathered to celebrate this great American hero. And I would like to thank uh, the Consulate General of Japan, the Japanese American National Museum, the staff at Gopher Broke National Education Center for their work on pushing this initiative forward. But most importantly, most importantly, I would like to thank the members of the Glendale City Council for their unanimous support in making today possible. The fact that we are here today 79 years after Sadao's death is a testament to the power of his story. It's a testament to the power of the story of the Japanese American soldiers of World War II. And most importantly, it's a testament to the power of our nation, the United States of America, who honors this brave young American hero. We have a couple of very special guests here today, and I'd like to take this moment to introduce them. We have family members of Sadao Munamori, and I would like to ask Miss Janet Nakakihara and her son, James Nakakihara, to please stand. Janet is Sadao's niece. As I mentioned a moment ago, and you'll hear from James in a minute, as I mentioned a moment ago, towards the end of the war, Sadao was engaged in a fierce battle, and as he was retreating to a foxhole, a hand grenade bounced off of his helmet, rolled into that foxhole in front of two of his fellow soldiers. And Sadao, without thinking, threw himself onto the hand grenade, taking the blast and saving the lives of those two soldiers. We have the family members of one of those soldiers here today. The soldier's name was Akira Andy Shishido, and Yone Sakamaki is here today with her family, and she is the sister-in-law of Andy Shishido. Uh, Mrs. Sakamaki, can you please stand and be recognized? Please stand. Thank you for being here today. It is now my privilege to introduce the elected officials of Glendale City Council who made today's ceremony and dedication possible, and they all would like to say a few words. And I, I have to say as an aside, when, when this proposal came before the City Council, four of them were present, and they literally were fighting over the mic to sing the praises of what we are doing here today. And so I asked one of the staff members, oh, do the city council members always agree on everything so readily? And she said, oh, no, they don't agree on anything. 
But on this, they agreed. And for that, we thank them all. I first would like to bring up the mayor, Mayor Daniel Brotman. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Maki, for the introduction and for what you do. Um, and I'm honored to stand here as mayor of the city of Glendale to formally dedicate this site as the Sadao S. Munamori Memorial Square. None of us, of course, had the opportunity to know Mr. Munamori in person. We don't know whether he stood out as a kid growing up in Glendale, whether he exhibited any special bravery or patriotism, but we do know that he stood out at a time when standing out and stepping up meant taking great risks. He stepped up to fight for his country even at a time when it herded his family and other Japanese Americans into detention camps simply because of their ancestry. He stepped up and went for broke even when Japanese Americans were segregated into separate fighting units. He stepped up and he made the ultimate sacrifice when duty called, giving his life to save his comrades and to help his country achieve victory against fascism in World War II. It's hard to imagine what his sacrifice meant to his family and his community at a time when their patriotism was so questioned. Anyway, that was Sadao Munamori, the man, and then there's Sadao Munamori, the message. We live at a time when every, everything seems to be about glorifying the rich and the famous and the powerful, when the aspiration of so many young people is to be a social media influencer, and when the measure of success is how many likes we get on our selfies, when we attack and demean our fellow citizens because we disagree with their beliefs or the way, we, the way they live. That's why it's so important to remember that it wasn't always this way, and it doesn't need to be this way. To me, Sadao Munamori represents the kind of character we need more of in our community. To me, he is an inspiration for Glendalians and others. And I hope this memorial will trigger passers-by to learn about him, to learn what kind of person he was, what he did for us, to learn about the history of his time and what we did, what we did to our Japanese American neighbors and to understand what it means to be a great human being. So I want to express my gratitude to the planning committee uh, for this event, the Japanese consulate of Los, in Los Angeles, Go For Broke National Education Center, city staff who are all about us, and those who played a pivotal role in ensuring that uh, ensuring today's commemoration becomes a reality. Um, together we stand in tribute to a hero whose sacrifice will resonate not only in the corridors of our nation's history, but in our cities. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Brotman, and thank you for your leadership here at Glendale. Our next city council member is the individual who initiated this whole project and I know is feeling very proud today about what he and we have accomplished. It is my pleasure to introduce Council Member Artie Kasakian. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Maki, and thank you everyone for coming. Um, Honorable Council General, Reverend Clergy, our honored guests, members of the Munamori family and veterans of our armed forces, uh, this is a very special day for me. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about why this is so important to me in particular, is I, I worked as city clerk. I was elected city clerk for 15 years in the city. The office of the city clerk is right there. You can see the windows on the corner, right outside the war memorial here we have on our campus. And outside in the city hall lobby, before the renovation, there was a small framed photo of the Congressional Medal of Honor with a name and a paragraph underneath it that hung there before the remodel. It's no longer there now. And I must have walked past that at least a thousand times, if not 10,000 times, multiple, multiple times a day and never stopped once to read uh, the, the tiny, you know, 10 uh, point font writing underneath it. And then one day waiting for someone as I, to wait and meet them in the lobby, I took a moment to read it and it was the first time I was familiarized with the story of Sadao Spud's Munamori. And, and it hit me that more people 
don't know about what this young man did for our country. And more importantly, the sacrifice he made at a time when our country had not treated our Japanese American citizens fairly. We needed to do more to memorialize his sacrifice and elevate him as an example, as the mayor said, to so many others. I teach political science and government. I'm a student of history. I studied history in college, which is why I'm so interested in it and passionate about it. And once during one of the semesters, we had an opportunity to be visited by Dr. Terrence Roberts, who's a living civil rights icon. He was one of the Little Rock Nine, the African-American students who attended Little Rock High School with armed U.S. servicemen accompanying them for them to receive their public education. And he came and spoke to the students at Glendale College, and one of my political science students, one of my American government students, asked a question afterwards. And it's a question that has lingered with me since. This student was the daughter of undocumented aliens in this country. She was one of my top students, understood government, loved the class, was getting the top grade. And so I was waiting to see what she would ask Dr. Terrence Roberts. And she said, Dr. Roberts, how do you love a country that doesn't love you back? And it's a question that has lingered with me for a long time. Because as great as our nation is, conceived in liberty and dedicated to that proposition that all men are created equal, we have not extended that to every citizen in our country. At various times, women, African Americans, Hispanics, Japanese Americans, many, many people have been denied those blessings of liberty. And so the question still lingers, how do we love a country that sometimes does not love its citizens back? And the answer is in the story and the experience and the life lived, as short as it was of Sadeo Munamori. It's by having faith in America, faith that the sum is greater than all of its parts, that this experiment of democracy is always gonna work towards perfection if it's all of us sacrifice for the greater good. So today, we honor an amazing American. We honor his answer to that question of how do you love this country? You do it by having faith and by giving it your all. I am honored to be here in the presence of others who also served and answered that call and who have survived to tell the story of such brave people like Sadao Munamori. And I thank the family and everyone else for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Artie, for those very moving words. I'd like to now call up another council member who was also very excited about today's event, and that's Aran Najarian. Thank you, Dr. Maki, council general, clergy, and everyone who's here. Thank you. Thank you for coming to this dedication. You know, some people say that there's no greater calling than to serve your country. And you can raise that up a notch by saying there's, no, there's an even greater calling to go into combat and to fight for your country. And perhaps the greatest sacrifice and commitment that anyone can make, man or woman, is to give your life for your country. And that's what we have today. And as a member of our Glendale community, I'm quite sure that Spuds, I didn't know his name was, nickname was Spuds, uh, Munamori uh, volunteered to fight for the United States and to go into combat. And there's no better place to recognize his sacrifice than on this I want to quote Abraham Lincoln, but on this hallowed ground, because this is the very special place in all of Glendale where we recognize and memorialize and pray and cry for and hope for the best for humanity in the city of Glendale, right here in our war memorial. It makes me very proud that one of our very own in Glendale made the ultimate sacrifice and makes me proud of him as a community member, him as a Japanese American, and him as a human being. Thank you, everyone.
Thank, thank you, Councilmember Najarian. And for those of you who also didn't know that Sadao Munamori's nickname was Spud, the reason for that is he was one of those rare second generation Japanese Americans who enjoyed potatoes more than rice. So he earned the nickname Spud. Our next council member is somebody who also, on the night that we first talked about this at the city council, was just elated to support the project and to have this day come to fruition. And we're very happy to have her here today, council member Paula Devine. Thank you all for being here, Council General um, family. I'm so proud to have met all of you that are here. Um, and I am so proud and honored to be here for the unveiling of Glendale's very first Memorial Square, the very first one. What a great honor for the family. And to think that we are honoring not only an American hero, but a hometown hero. And that makes us very proud. A Congressional Medal of Honor awardee. Amazing, amazing. So we gather to tribute him because of his sacrifice, and the very essence of courage and patriotism. He demonstrated unparalleled bravery on the battlefield. When you think of it, he was 23 years old and he sacrificed his life for his fellow soldiers. We owe a debt of gratitude to, I guess I can call him Spud, whose bravery in challenging circumstances stands as a lasting inspiration to everyone. And may we stride, all of us, and those coming in the future, to embody the principles that he fought for, for justice, for freedom, and the belief that in times of adversity, we are all united by a common purpose. I'm so happy and proud, and what a beautiful day. And I wanted to start, and I forgot to say, Kanishua. Hello, everybody. Could, you ask, could we have asked for a more beautiful day to honor this wonderful individual? So thank you all for being here. And um, I, I can't wait to see the unveiling. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Devine, and thank you for reminding us just how young Spud was, 23 years old, and it's a reminder of how early his life was cut short. When Councilmember Kasakian came up with the idea of naming an intersection after Sadao Monomori, he reached out. One of his first acts was to reach out to the Consulate General of Japan. And the Council General, Ken Kosone, who is with us today, received that invitation to work with him wholeheartedly and has embraced it ever since and has made sure his staff worked diligently on that. We are proud and excited to have the Council General of Los Angeles, Ken Kosone. Honorable Council Members and the family of uh, Sadao Munemori and everybody, uh, good morning. Ohayou gozaimasu. I'm Council General of Japan in Los Angeles. Um, it's a true, uh, true honor to join this special event, uh, celebra celebrating the unveiling of Sadao S. Munemori Memorial Square here in the city of Glendale. At the age of 23, he gave his life to save his comrades during World War II, becoming the first Japanese American awarded the Medal of Honor. I learned that uh, Sadao's eldest sister lived in Japan and her husband has been drafted into the Japanese Imperial Army at the time. It is hard to imagine how he felt about his situation, possibly having to fight against his own brother-in-law. This Sadao's story impressed upon me again, the great sacrifices uh, suffering of Japanese American endured during the World War II. I'm very grateful for, uh, to the Gulf of Broke and the Japanese American National Museum for sharing Japanese American history of that time broadly with diverse communities. Because what happened to the Japanese American could happen to any ethnic group if you don't learn the lesson from the past. 
as we face the sobering reality of the confrontation and divisions in various places throughout the world. City of Glendale's decision to honor Sadao S. Munemori brings us great hope. It encourages us to look back to ponder how to avoid repeating the same mistakes of the past. It also allows us to honor and appreciate the fact that the Japan and the United States now enjoy one of the strongest alliances in the world and even lead the world in maintaining and strengthening the free and open international order based on rule of law. I hope to see millions of people, including Japanese citizens, across this intersection in the years to come, remembering, the appreciating, remembering and appreciating the shining example of Sadao's memory and the resistance of the remarkable contribution of the Japanese American community. I'm also grateful to the city of Glendale for a long and enduring friendship with Japan. The Glendale has been a sister city of Higashi Osaka since 1961, and two cities worked together to build a beautiful Shosean tea house in Brad Park in uh, 1974. With the name, uh, naming of Sadao S. Memory Square, I look forward to friendship between city of Glendale and Japan and the Japanese American community grow even stronger. And let us continue to work together to honor the legacy of Sadao S. Munemori. It always reminds us the importance of cooperation, not division or confrontation. I thank you very much. Thank you, Council General, and thank you for your work in making today happen. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a member of the Munamori family, and I'd like to ask Mr. James Nakakihara, the grandnephew of Sadao Munamori, to come and share a few words with us now. So I was asked to share, um, share with you my family's reflections on the Sadao S. Munamori Square. And with only three minutes and a mouth that won't quit, that seemed like quite a challenge. Uh, but then again, when I, when I consider what my great uncle accomplished in a fraction of a second, uh, that seems really like an eternity now. Yeah. And so, this is no Gettysburg, but here are four words that concisely describe our sentiments. First of all, honored. Uh, the first words from my mother regarding this event and how she felt about it was how honored she was. Honored for her family to be recognized this way after so many years. Grateful. We're so thankful for the kindness, effort, and thought that went into the ceremony and the dedication of the square to Uncle Sadao. For us, it is unmerited favor, that is grace, that we are recipients of this kind and are very beholden to you all. Hopeful. Although we may never know, we are looking forward to how this location's name positively affects generations of Glendale residents and visitors who will wonder who this Sadao Munamori was, and why his life and sacrifice matters. Lastly, proud. We are so proud to have such a man as part of our family history. His legacy has always been something that has been shared with pride. This square being the latest source of inspiration and reminder that greater love hath no man, but that a man lay down his life for his friends. So in closing, I, uh, I reiterate how honored we are to be invited to this celebration of Uncle Sadao, how grateful we are to those who made it happen, including, of course, the taxpayers of Glendale, how hopeful we are that Uncle Sadao's memory will spur one another on toward love and good deeds, and how genuinely proud we are, as fate would have it, to be part of this history. And may I add, as Uncle Sadao was, very, very proud to be Americans. James, <clears throat> James, thank you for those very personal words and helping us to remember that while he is an American hero, he is also a human being with family that remember and love him. And Mrs. Nakakihara, thank you for joining us here today. We are very honored to have you in our presence. I'd like to take this opportunity now to acknowledge the presence of two living 
World War II Japanese American veterans that we have with us here today. The first is Yosh Nakamura. Yosh was a member of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team and he currently lives in Whittier, California. Our second veteran here today is Mr. Ed Nakamura. Ed served in the military intelligence service in the Pacific Theater of World War II. He lives currently in Long Beach, California, and he also is 98 years young. We also have uh, an elected official amongst us today, and that is the Honorable Jeff Maloney, who is the council member from the city of Alhambra. He is also on the board of directors of Gopher Broke National Education Center and will be speaking at our lunchtime activities. Before we unveil the plaque that we all came to see, I thought it would be appropriate for me to read to you the words of the citation on Sadao Munamori's Medal of Honor. And it says, he fought with great gallantry near Saravezza, Italy. When his unit was pinned down by grazing fire from the enemy's strong mountain defense, and the command of the squad devolved on him with the wounding of its regular leader, he made frontal one-man attacks across direct fire and knocked out two machine guns with grenades. Withdrawing under murderous fire and showers of grenades from the other enemy emplacements, he had nearly reached a shell crater occupied by two of his men when an unexploded grenade bounced off of his helmet and rolled towards his helpless comrades. He arose into the withering fire, dived onto the missile, and smothered its blast with his body. By his swift, supremely heroic action, Private First Class Munamori saved two of his men at the cost of his own life and did much to clear the path for his company's victorious advance. That's the man that we celebrate here today. I, I think it's appropriate if we all count to three together. So I will start us out and we'll say one, two, three, and they will pull it off. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay, here we go. One. <laughs> 